Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is on one of my absolute favorite topics. It's about feng shui for your home. I'm pretty sure you've heard feng shui thrown around there anytime it comes to like your energy or the universe or qi, but I wanna break down the basics of what feng shui actually is. Feng shui is an ancient science that dates back over 3,500 years. Feng shui has its roots in the Chinese way of seeing the universe. Basically, the universe is categorized into five basic elements. Those elements are fire, earth, wood, water, and metal. And each of these elements attract either positive or negative energy. This energy is called qi, and qi basically brings good fortune to those who are surrounded by it. The literal translation of feng shui is wind and water. Feng is wind plus shui is water. So when you combine these two elements, they create really magical harmony and balance, which you can then bring into your home. So in this video, I'll be breaking down basic principles of feng shui and how you can use it to energize the happiness and health in your home. So how feng shui helps your energy is you want to basically use the balance of the five elements in any given space and the more you energize a specific element or a specific area in your home, it's going to create more qi, more harmony, bring you more health and more happiness. Practicing really good feng shui principles could also increase your energy level and help you stay healthy. Have you guys ever noticed that every time your home is like cluttered or something feels completely off? That's basically how your energy is reacting to the energy that's within your home. Really great interior design and space planning actually follows basic principles of feng shui, sometimes without you even realizing it. The way you position your sofa in relation to your television, the way you position your head in your bedroom also affects your health in so many ways you can't even explain. So I'll be talking about the best areas to feng shui your home and where it's the most useful. Let's start with a front door. All of the energy and the good auspicious luck you have starts at the front door. This is where all of the great energy starts and how it flows throughout the rest of your home. So the first thing you have to do is eliminate all that clutter. This isn't just for that front entry, but really you need to eliminate clutter in the entire home. I have a really great video coming up in the next couple of weeks where you guys are gonna get to purge with me. I mean, we are really gonna Marie Kondo this place up so one of the first things that you need to do is get rid of all the clutter. I have a really great video on how to store and organize your entries, so I'm gonna pop up a link so that you guys can follow that if you want some really great ideas on how you can organize your entries so it's free of clutter and it'll bring in some of that really amazing chi. What do I mean by clearing clutter? That basically means there's not a gang load of shoes on the floor, there's no keys and wallets and coins and everything that's kind of spilling out on, you know, like a little console by your entry. You want to make sure that there's a place for everything. Maybe a shoe organizer to put all of your shoes in, a tray or a valet or a little box so that you could hide your keys, your wallet and your coins. You want to make sure that everything is really tidy and really beautiful. Bonus points if you could place like a really beautiful plant there. Having a living plant at the entry of your home will also be a great way to help chi come in and flow out through the rest of the space. Before we get into the rest of the video, I just want to let you guys know that I am not an expert by any means on feng shui. I've just been practicing feng shui for such a long time, I think ever since I was a little girl, because my mother, um, we're Buddhist by faith, okay, so I think this is a very like superstitious kind of Buddhist quality. She has always had feng shui masters, fortune tellers, and monks come to our home to bless the home with like really positive energy. We've had this feng shui master that we've been using for, gosh, I wanna say almost 20 years. I love this feng shui master. I mean, so much that even when I was younger and my mom brought him to the house, I would tag along all of these like feng shui consultations, write everything down as if I knew what I was doing, you know? And later on in life, as I started to have my own studio space and then my own apartment and then finally my own home, I was able to apply these feng shui principles to really just raise up the energy and the frequency of my home and I've seen how it affected my life in such a positive way. 
I mean, I'm really one of those people who believe in the power of manifestation, but beyond what you can manifest in the universe, there are really key ingredients and principles in feng shui that can really boost up your luck and help those energies align. So if you have your own home or you're looking for a new home, one of the key things that I absolutely have to tell you about a front entry door in feng shui is that once you open the door, you want to make sure that there is not a direct line of sight to a back door. That basically just means the minute the chi enters your front door, it has like a clear pathway to your back door, and then all of your energy and good luck is gonna go right out the window, or right out the door. When I was house hunting with Lahubs a few years ago, every single home we looked at, I mean, one of the first things was that the front door didn't have direct access to like a back door, a sliding door, a patio door. And if it did, I was like, we are not getting this house. I know a lot of the times that's simply out of your control. Let's say you're already living in a home where the the front door sees the back door. There are so many feng shui elements that you can place there so that the chi has room to maneuver around and be able to kind of land in the rest of the house. One of the ways that you can help chi flow is to place something in its way. For instance, a plant, a sofa, a chair, maybe even an accent table with a really pretty floral arrangement above it. I mean, I don't want to get too much into detail, but basically as long as you have something there blocking a cheese pathway, if it has direct access, it'll be able to linger longer into your home. Moving on to the bathrooms. A bathroom is where good energy goes to die. I mean, I know that it's really common for us to like spruce up our bathroom, make it look really pretty, but in feng shui, bathrooms are like really horrible energy because clearly it's where you know you deposit waste and it's like dirty, you're cleaning yourself, so it's like you're cleaning all the bad energy off of you for the day and this is where it just kind of dies in the bathroom. So instead of trying to re-energize a bathroom, two of the things that you absolutely have to do is number one, always, always, always put your toilet seat down after every use. Like literally that toilet seat has to go down so all of that energy and waste doesn't come back up. The second thing you have to do is close your bathroom door. Like I literally have all my bathroom doors closed, all of my toilet seats down, and I have really trained lahubs and guests to do the same. Let's talk about feng shui for the living room. The living room is one of the most important corners of the home because it really symbolizes a place for all of the family to gather and get together. There are a couple of basic guidelines for good living room arrangements and feng shui. Number one, you want to bring as much natural light into the space as possible. Always have your drapery open to bring in all of that great natural light and good energy. Opening the windows also allows the stale energy that stagnates in the living room to kind of dispel and then the new energy to come in. I know that all living rooms are not equal. Sometimes you have like odd corners, weird angles, like really off shapes. You're trying to create a really rectangular or a really square furniture layout. So everything kind of looks squared off. That means creating conversation areas. You can do this by placing sofas and chairs to face each other or creating like groups of seating so that the people that are using the living room space kind of have direct eye contact. I have a really great video on ways you can maximize your living room layout. I'll also drop that link for you guys to take a look. You guys have seen all the plants that I have everywhere in my home. I love putting plants in the living room and the lounge because that's where you see them the most. You also want to make the coffee table the focal point of that conversational seating area so that it becomes a symbol of family gatherings and togetherness. Let's talk about feng shui in the kitchen. One of the first things I did when I moved into this house is I demolished the entire kitchen. Each feng shui principle really has directional elements. I don't want to get too caught up into that. I mean, unless you guys want me to detail it in a later video. So the feng shui element of water is typically relegated to the north side and fire is on the south side. When I bought the home, I mean, all of the elements were like totally off. The sink, which symbolizes water, was like in the south location. The stove, which symbolizes fire, was in like the north location. So I demoed everything and made sure that all of the elements were completely balanced without canceling each other out. Of course, I know you guys aren't gonna do a complete kitchen overhaul. So here are some really basic principles for you to follow when it comes to feng shui in the kitchen. You absolutely need to have really great lighting in the kitchen because that brings in all the great chi. If you don't have natural lighting or a skylight, I would put in like really great overhead recess lights or an overhead pendant that brightens up the entire area. You wanna store knives out of sight, like literally put them in a drawer 
get rid of those butcher blocks where you have those knives in clear sight. Those are like poison arrows waiting to stab you. I mean, I know I don't want to get that dramatic, but really, feng shui is all about symbolism and knives just represent discomfort. You want to hide all of your trash cans. Try to put them in a cabinet because trash cans equal clutter and we are trying to get rid of all that clutter, guys. The best way to do this is probably to have a trash can in a cabinet under your sink because clearly your sink is where you're throwing all of your trash and debris. You can just open up the cabinet, pull out your trash can and throw all the trash in there. A decorative item that you can use on the countertops or the island is a bowl of fruit. Fruit symbolizes abundance and health and wealth. You just want to make sure that you replace the fruit so that it doesn't rot and then obviously if that was the case you're kind of bringing more of that bad energy in so really beautiful vibrant ripe fruit is a plus and like rotting fruit is like an absolute no-no so let's move on to the office the first rule you guessed it remove all that clutter declutter remove all of that loose paper on your desk a really great way to organize all of that loose paper is simply with a tray. You can leave a tray on your desk and then file all of your loose papers in folders and then just simply leave it on your desk that way. Visually, it looks as though it's completely tidy, but of course you have all of your loose paper within arm's reach. The second thing that you could do is to hide all of those unsightly cords. Cords are like my number one pet peeve. Like I hate seeing cords hanging out underneath the TV. Really, you can just install it like in the walls and hide it in the wall somewhere. But when it comes to your office, that's not always easy to do. Cords represent competing like electromagnetic energy. That's just way too much energy happening in your home office. The office should be a place where you're like sitting down, zoned in, completely productive. Now if you have all these cords all over the place, it just like messes with that energy field. So my advice is to number one, hide the cords. Maybe you can hide it behind like your desk or your console. Or number two, you could get a Velcro strip or like a cable tie and kind of bunch all your cords together. So at least they're tidy and they don't look as messy. The most important tip that you absolutely have to know in your office is that your desk does not face the wall. I mean, I don't know how many times I've seen this in like my friends' homes, even client homes. They always have their desk positioned so they're like facing the wall, which is an absolute no-no. You wanna make sure that your desk and where you're sitting, where your head chair is, you have a direct visual eye line to your entry door. That means when someone opens the door, you visually see them. This basically symbolizes that you don't want someone to sneak up on you. You are the master of your domain, so you should have full control of who comes in and who comes out. Lastly, let's talk about feng shui for the bedroom. One of the principles that feng shui absolutely loves and adheres to is symmetry. The chi energy has a really great place to flow if everything kind of looks symmetrical in the bedroom, which means you have a bed in the center and two coordinating nightstands on the side. The nightstands don't need to be identical. They just need to feel equal in weight so that their symmetry is balanced and the chi has a really great place to flow. One of the questions that I get asked the most is where do I place the headboard in a bedroom? Using that same principle in the office where you want people sneaking up on you, you want to make sure that when you're lying in bed, even if you're upright or lying in bed, you have a direct visible eye line to the entry door. Someone opens the door and you can see them right away. So no one can sneak up on you. You guys understand that? So you don't want your head to the side and your entry door over here. You absolutely don't want your bed facing the back of the entry door because then you can't see who's coming in. So the area where you should position your head is facing the entry door. Another feng shui tip for the bedroom is mirrors. Mirrors are a really great way to help the energy flow, especially if they reflect something really beautiful. You can have mirrors in the bedroom, but you can't have them facing the bed. So if the mirror was on a wall and the wall wasn't facing the bed, that's great. Bonus points if it's reflecting a really beautiful window, you're getting all of that great natural light and you can see like the landscape, your trees, or like a really great view outside. What you don't want is to have that mirror reflecting your bed because that just means that you're inviting like a stranger into your bedroom. And it's an absolute, absolute no-no if you're coupled up or you're married. It almost symbolizes that someone's cheating or you know or having an affair which I mean who wants that right so when decorating for the bedroom you want to use a lot of really natural organic elements if you have the opportunity to do either a live plant or an artificial plant you absolutely want to use the living live plant if you don't have a green thumb and you love the look of artificial plants 
definitely choose something of like a higher quality, like a higher quality silk, a higher quality synthetic fiber, something that really mimics the natural look the most because that synthetic look is really just gonna bring that energy down. Also, if you use any artificial plants inside the home, make sure you dust it often. You know, dust and debris could collect on, you know, silk leaves so easily. I see that all the time. So it's really easy for you to just kind of get like a wet cloth or maybe even like a baby wipe and then wipe all that dust off. Cause dust equals bad chi and nobody wants bad chi in their lives. So to recap, mirrors in the bedroom are an absolute no-no when they reflect the bed. For kitchen designs and layout, never place the sink and the stove directly across from each other. This is especially true for renovators or remodelers. If you guys are building a brand new kitchen, never place water and fire directly across from each other because they'll cancel all that good harmony and balance out. Plants in the living room allow really great energy to flow into the space. You want to make sure that you maintain them, keep them watered, keep them alive because if they start dying, your luck will too. Desks should never ever face walls. You want to have a direct line of sight to the entry door so guests don't surprise you. You always want to place your headboard on a protected wall in your bedroom. That means a wall without windows and a wall that has direct eye line to the entry door. You want to balance out that bedroom with coordinating nightstands on either side of your bed. Feng Shui in the home basically just means the spatial arrangement and the orientation of your furniture for the home. The way you place furniture and objects in your home helps that flow of energy and attracts that really good chi. The more you can help chi flow through your home, the more you can help that energy level, it'll raise your frequency, balance you out, and have overall the most favorable effects on your well-being. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I loved making it. I mean, I've been trying to do this feng shui video for like a really long time. I've been stockpiling all of these tips and tricks and we literally just scratched the surface, guys. There are so many different schools of training and thought that we really just kind of covered the absolute basics. I would love to do more of these videos for you guys, but I really wanna know if this is something you're interested in. Maybe we can start a new playlist and give you really detailed interpretations of like feng shui for the bedroom, for the living room, for the home office, the lounge, the dining room, and kind of really break it all down. But absolutely let me know if that's something you want to see in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this type of content, of course, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.